All right. Well, today we have the honor of bringing on um, one of the faves from the cast of Chasing LA. Um, over the past few weeks, we've been kind of reporting uh, out about this show. If you haven't checked out the web series, go to YouTube. It drops um, every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Um, now, Hershey LaCour was born in St. Louis, grown in Atlanta, Georgia. He's a new reality star. He's a TikTok personality and one of the best up and coming drag queens in the LA scene. She's your best friend. She's your homegirl. She's your favorite auntie from the legendary house of Jate in Los Angeles, California. She is Hershey LaCour Jate. So let's try to bring her on. Yes. Hi. Yes. What's going on? What's going can on? You hear me? Hey, Hershey. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. How are you? Another day, another quarter, child. Ain't nothing going on. <laughs> <laughs> another day, another quarter. Well, you look good. Your skin is popping. The hair is hairy. <laughs> Thank the you. Melanin is popping. Okay, pure. We see you Thank now. You. We're, we're gonna try to make sure that Darren doesn't fangirl out during this uh, this interview because he's been talking about you since uh, the the premiere of this show. Mm -hmm. He was following you on TikTok beforehand. Um, so <laughs> if his computer freeze, just know that it, it wasn't his computer. It was him. He's stuck. <laughs> Not I'm stuck. He's stuck. <laughs> No, but for real, like, oh my goodness. So like, you know, I've been on TikTok. I started doing videos of my own and I started following people and I, when you're one of the people that I follow yeah. because I know you you talk, you 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 have, you get into a lot of debates. Um, Maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, well, that's cool. I, I, Derek had told me about Chasing LA and I looked at the cast and I'm like, what? Okay, oh, all right. <laughs> So how is it though? How is it? Um, did, did you start off on TikTok? Well, you did they? I'm sorry. See, see, look. Right. He gave you okay. <laughs> so well, we're gonna start. We're, we'll start with a little background about her. Right. A little background. All yeah. Right. Okay. So, Percy, you, know, you told me that you're from St. Louis. Yeah. And uh, but you were raised in Atlanta. Um, before becoming a reality star, what was life like for you? Like, have you always been in drag? Did you start drag when you were in Atlanta or did you do it in LA? Or like, what was your journey from um, just your everyday life moving into the lane of an entertainer? So I, when I say grown in Atlanta, my drag, I was grown in Atlanta. I moved, I lived in St. Louis till I was like 22, from birth to 22. Okay. Um, and that's when I started drag. Um, Tyler Perry, unfortunately, was my introduction to drag. So... <laughs> <laughs> I started playing around with wigs and stuff after watching his plays and videos and stuff. And then that dramatic long story short, that bumped into YouTube. So I started making my own YouTube videos and all that whatnot. And it still gags, like people pop up on TikTok saying they remember me from YouTube, which still gags me to this day because I did not think I was that important. But YouTube went into, and I, I used to tell people all the time, like, I'm never going to do drag. Girl, those girls do entirely too much. I'm not tr trying to do all that. Like, that's too much. <laughs> But um, there was a competition in um, St. Louis, uh, and they was give, they were giving five hundred dollars out. Um, so I was like, "Oh, that's nothing. I can win it." I was like twenty one at the time, so I was like, "Oh, talent portion, I'll kill that." Mm -hmm. So I walked. In, I invited like twenty people. Um, walked into the dressing room with this dollar store palette of eyeshadow only, and I stole my sister prom dress, and I thought I was about to just annihilate everybody i walked into the dressing room these girls had assistants and wigs and, <laughs> and mirrors jury i like it was like the scene of a movie i like i froze and just looked at everybody like oh uh, uh. And, I, and i just ran i like dipped to the, the bathroom so one of the queens that was in the dressing room she like saw me and like followed me into the bathroom and came in there and saw me crying she was like oh honey what's wrong like, what's the problem so i'm blubbering and trying to explain to her why i can't leave because 20 mind you 20 people if this had been a regular day i would have just left mm -hmm. 20 people are coming to see me <laughs> so right. I'm, like, I'm blubbering like oh i do can i like you guys are so beautiful and i like i just got this eyeshadow like what am i gonna do so she's like girl I hush and brought me back to the room and like each queen like that was in the competition, like gave me something to use. So mm -hmm. that was my official introduction to drag. Okay, so wait, so were you always with, you weren't with the house of Jate before. So no. after, after your first competition or after that experience of doing drag, did you move into like a drag house or did you have like a drag mother or like? 
I didn't get, I didn't, um, my drag house didn't come until like literally two years ago. So I was like doing drag for maybe four years before I had a drag mother. Mm. Um, and that's because I had found my own style of doing drag because I started, like I started professionally in Atlanta. So in Atlanta, for the most part, those are pageant queens, gowns, yeah. hairs, to the ceiling, all that stuff. And that's not what I saw my drag ads at the time. Mm -hmm. So nobody really saw it for me. So that's why I didn't have a mother. Okay. Um, I didn't get my performance style and everything down until I moved out here. And that's when I really like made my like craft crispy. Mm -hmm. So uh yeah. my sister uh Cornbread, her name is Cornbread Jate. She saw me first and was like, Girl, why you ain't in the house yet? And I was like, oh, girl, you know, ain't nobody checking for me. She was like, Okay, fine. Um she a week later, that's when Calypso, that's my drag mother, Calypso. She uh texted me, she was like, Okay, you announced Jate now. And that's me making a long, dramatic story short. Like me and Calypso had seen each other like on and off on the mm -hmm. scene up and up until then. So she's always been watching me, but she never really said anything to me about being in the house. It was Cornbread that got me in the house, and Calypso was like, "Okay, she can, she's cool." Okay, so you turned that. I'm pretty sure over the past year and a half of us being locked down, yeah, uh, you turned your mm -hmm. drag into um, a media personality through TikTok. What was yeah. that like for you, going from now being a live performer and then having to kind of jump back to social media after your YouTube days and trying to like do these little 15, 60 second videos and building a community there. Like what made you want to do it that way? Oh, well, TikTok still owe me $600. So there was this campaign going around when they, like when TikTok was trying to pop and mm -hmm. they hired a bunch of queens, myself included, and they gave us $600. We just had to be on TikTok promoting for a month. Uh, and oh, I don't think they expected TikTok to really take off, but of course the pandemic happened, mm -hmm. and boom! So they owe a lot of us six hundred dollars that they still haven't given me. TikTok ain't paid what? Me. what? what? Oh no! no there's, we got there's a lot of us that not that did not get our money. Mm -hmm. Um, but I all I'm always in like even in the drag community, I'm always in contra what is considered controversial stuff. Like I say my opinion, like if I feel some type of way about something, mm -hmm. I want to say it. So it was nothing to be in the TikTok space, and I see something, somebody says something that didn't make no sense. I'd be like, "Oh no, girl, that's not, that's not right." What you just mm -hmm. said, that gets me in a lot of trouble actually in, in out here in LA too, because on the drag the drag community, they all get into some stuff or say some stuff that don't make no sense to me. So I'll be telling the young queens, "No, girl, you ain't got to deal with that. That don't sound right." No. Right. <laughs> no, I, yeah, and I think like the last topic because I feel like every every. Since I've been on TikTok, every week is a new topic. You know, this topic was the whole bisexuals, uh, women not dating, not wanting to date bisexuals or whatever. And it's still kind of lingering on on TikTok. I'm like, they will not leave me alone. <laughs> they you, I, still... No, for real. I'm looking at your videos. Every, I'm like, yo, it's people in the comments stitching your videos, you stitching them. Like, I'm like, yo, it's. I, I don't get it. I, and I said it on I said it on one of my videos. It's like we don't come we don't ever come to like a common ground with these topics. It's always very divisive. I will say not on not saying you, but I'm just saying on both sides I see it mm -hmm. because I do see both sides like attacking each other and it's like, mm -hmm. come on now. We can't we can't I see it. Mm -hmm. The way I explained it to some people because you know, some people I am in my comments like having actual conversations with it's only those like seven or eight that's trying to make a moment out of it instead mm -hmm. of talking about it like that clitoris whatever her name is i can't ooh, i can't stand the child oh but the anyway. one that taps the mic that's what i call her yeah Woo. so there's some people that want to talk and some people like her that just want to make moments mm -hmm. she just wants to be seen so let i let people like her be seen but some people do want to talk about it the way i see it is we're in a space where everybody like everybody's tired of what What's the word I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but everybody's trying to be seen, but nobody's really trying to listen. Mm. Um, especially with that conversation, I hear, because we were having, and to be specific, we were having a conversation with, with Black women. And I yeah. hear what they're saying, and I hear exactly how they feel on the subject, but it doesn't apply to the overall situation, if that makes sense. Mm. Like, I get what they were trying to say. I get that they feel like they're under pressure, but it doesn't really apply to the overall conversation that we're having. So it, it turns into a whole bunch of stuff. Like it, it is people on both sides attacking, but I feel like there is a common ground. Just nobody's trying to hear what that is right now. Right. Well, yeah. that seems to be a common place for you to be trying to be a mediator and <laughs> listening to both sides and making people hear each other.
because yeah. on this, um, this is your breakout uh, role on, on reality TV on Chasing LA. And since the premiere, you have kind of been the voice of reason. You've been labeled the voice of reason for the show. Um, you don't seem to, you, you don't seem to be with the drama uh, as much as some of the other personalities are. Who, buddy? Um, <laughs> we just met each other, right? And that, like, that was, <laughs> like, we just met each other. How we are like, mm -hmm. how we fight like that, like like this woman and stole your man or something. Like y'all don't know y'all don't know each other. This is the first time we're meeting. Um, and I think that you kind of echo what the viewer, you're, you're like a viewer that's on the cast. Like, what is, what is wrong with y'all? Like, y'all know each other? You know yeah. what I mean? So, so for, uh, we've had um, um, Jayla on the show, we've had Q on the show. And so I want, we want your perspective. Um, how did you find your way onto Chasing LA? Like, um, did you audition for it? It was on accident. It was on ac um, I was, uh, I just finished the last episode of Chasing Dallas. It was around this time last year, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, I finished the last episode of Chasing Dallas and just a random thought. I was laying up with my boyfriend. I was just random. I wonder if they casting in LA. It was literally just a random thought. And I went to the Chasing Reality main page and saw they mm -hmm. had just like concluded the, uh, auditions. Right. So I was like, okay, I'll just wait till next season, whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So I followed um, Q, I followed Andario, and I followed the uh, producer who was with us at the time, Blake. She's not with us anymore. And um, it was Blake who actually reached out to me and was like, I see these pictures. Like, why didn't you audition for the show? And I was like, oh, girl, it's, not, it's fine. I'll wait till next season. I waited. I'm like, I waited too late. And she was like, no, like, send me a tape. Like, send me, like, send, how soon can you send a tape? I said, give me to tomorrow. So I woke mm -hmm. up the next day, sent the tape, and they casted me the next week. I was the last one casted on the show. Oh, very oh, wow. good. Look at God. What are you doing? Congratulations. <laughs> what are you doing? You're right on time. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, given the certain situations, now this last episode, because we're going to catch people up. Yeah. This last episode, we got a chance to get it to to know you more. We've seen yeah. you over the past four episodes, kind of being a voice of reason and trying to like cool the temperature between different parties, uh, especially from that crazy dinner. Uh, that Child, that okay. <laughs> right, and your your expression has been killing me. Like when y'all went hiking, and you were literally laying there like, "Well, bitch, I'm gonna stretch while y'all." Why y'all over here arguing? Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> the genuine move was like, I, we just got pet again. What is mm -hmm. the problem? <laughs> like, y'all need therapy, is what y'all need. You need therapy. Um, so you shared your story. Yeah. And I'm I want you to be able to speak on it, but there was a moment between you and Quan the Poet and Jayla mm -hmm. that you hosted at your house. And um you got a chance to tell us about what 2020 was like for you. Yes. And we didn't get a chance to see you for that, for that journey, but I know that it's probably going to be a really, really uh, inspirational thing going forward for you. Um, so I'm going to let you tell us what you shared. Oh, tell us. oh well, yeah. Well, shared in. without making it too dramatic, because listen, yeah. I did not mean to cry in that confessional because that's not my style. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Like, it just was a lot of things happening back to back to back. Uh, so, of course, it started with the job. I was working at a hotel. Um, they had just gave us two, like, they gave us two raises. Like, they gave us mm -hmm. back to back raises. Mm -hmm. And I got a promotion. And I just brought my little car for my birthday. So, like, I was good. But then, you know, the job went first. And then unemployment was up and down, acting a fool. Of course, you didn't know how you was going to pay your rent. Yeah. Come um, November... I'm just my uh, my drag mother Calypso. She works for Reach LA, and she was like, go, you know, she was trying to get people in to take testing for the center so they can get funding, so they can show people are coming in and getting their tests. Um, and we got a fifty dollar gift card for I think it was like Target or something. I just mm -hmm. heard money, so I was like, oh, fifty dollars, girl, I can go take that real quick. So went in with my friend um, SB, took the test, um, and it came back positive. My immediate reaction, and I can sit and laugh at it now, but my immediate reaction at the time, like, I just, like, I checked out. Like, I, it was like an outer body experience. Like, I was looking at myself, and I just froze. And I actually went back to apologize to those people because I scared the, the hell out of them because I, like, checked out, and I was just, like, staring into blank space. Mm -hmm. So they asked me, do you want to take it again? I was like, yeah, just just run it again. Let's do it one more time. Go on. It ain't right. That's all right. So they tested again and came back positive, and I was just... I was no good. I just, I checked out. I had to think about 
I just, I, I just my mindset was on, well, what am I going to do now? Like, what is this going to look like next? I couldn't just hearing it. I just couldn't fathom. Like, yeah, I couldn't take, I couldn't take it. And then it brought back a whole bunch of stuff that I like had buried for literally up until that point, like years. Um, I my before my boyfriend my last encounter like with a partner I was uh, raped, so after that situation I like I cut men off period like I wasn't doing anything with anybody I just I didn't want to be touched yeah and I had to like I had to, for while that was I did I took that test maybe like it, it was either the week before the show or the week after I first filming. Mm-hmm. It was a week before or a week after. I can't remember, but that's why I was so checked out in that first episode because I just was still in. You just found out. Said again. You had just found out before y'all started taping. Literally, the when we started taping, I found out. I can't remember if it was the oh, week wow. before or the week after. Mm. So yeah, I was going through that the whole time. Yeah, and then on top of that drag, December or when December came, um, California had cut off everybody's eating, um, our unemployment. So all I like, we had no money to pay our rent, or anything like stuff was happening back to back to back. So it just, I checked out of every. I just because you know, I'm starting to babble. I literally just I che- I checked out of everything. So all they arguing and stuff, girl. I was like, every time I got to a group event, I was like, girl, this again, like. I can't mm-hmm. have <laughs> right. <laughs> right. For real. Right. Right. I got time. Mm-hmm. Right. But no, I had to revisit. I just I just had to tell some honest truths to myself. Like yeah. on top of being assaulted, I had to be honest with myself about okay, it's easy to say, yeah, that man might have did it, but was I really taking care of myself that whole time up to then? Like, right. was I really strapping up each time I had a session? Mm-hmm. Like, and the What's messed up about it is I'll never really know. So I gotta, that's why I'm honest. I was being honest in the show. Like, I'm never gonna know. I'm being honest with myself. I don't know how I feel. Like, I just gotta get to, to today, I'm good. I just need to get to tomorrow. And then tomorrow, I'll get to the day after that because I'm not gonna act like it's it's easy. Cause I'm still working through saying, you know, I was assaulted. And mm-hmm. after that, I gotta work through saying, okay, now I have HIV. Actually saying, Saying I have HIV is easier than getting through the part of being assaulted because I still got to deal with that. Yeah, that's that's that. Yeah. Yourself. Are you so so? I used to also I probably used to do what your your house mother or your drag mother is doing. I worked mm-hmm. at an LGBTQ uh, youth center and we would refer them to services and we'd host events um, as far as get for testing and things like mm-hmm. that. And so there have been times when we'd have clients who would come in and uh, they'd get tested and we'd have to share with them the results and then kind of refer them to services like okay first thing we're going to do is going to go let a doctor check you out to make sure there's nothing else that's going on with you and then yeah. the next thing is to to link you um to a therapist or link you to a counselor that will be able to help you kind of mentally deal with this new information and then we'll set you up so we can you know plan your life out so you can be be healthier and whole so um with you sharing that part of your story last night Mm-hmm. What are some of the the other steps that you have taken to make sure that you are, you know, mentally good? Like I know that you said you're still dealing with the fact that you were sexually assaulted before that. Are you are you currently in therapy? Are you in counseling? Are you participating in support groups? Have you found um, outside of your boyfriend? Have you mm-hmm. found a support system and put something around you to kind of help you through this process? Uh, for the most, I haven't seek any, but like I, I did reach out for uh, professional help when I first got diagnosed um, as far as therapy, because I'm in a program now that, you know, gets me assistance with all that. Mm-hmm. But I didn't follow, follow up with it because it was still a struggle to like hear it yeah. when I first happened. The only, the only reason um, I had enough strength to like put it on the show was because I had just talked to my other friend who when we were in Atlanta together, he was diagnosed and he was just, we were going through how he felt about like saying it out loud and the stuff. We have similar similar experiences as far as our background, like growing up through church and how we feel about our parents and our families. And me saying it out loud was me speaking it for him. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind Mm -hmm. of using that as my therapy right now. Um, Just saying it out loud is helping me because he's not in a 
or to my understanding, he, I don't want to speak for him, but to my understanding, he's not in a space where he can freely say it to a lot of people. Right. And all I see right now is even in the in, even in my inbox right now, a, a lot of people are messaging me saying that they don't know how to say the words. Yeah. And I think why well, I think while I'm moving through the the getting through it process so fast is because I don't know. I'm trying to word it correctly. I'm not going to word. Sorry. I, I want to. You're wrong. No. There's a lot of shame. I think HIV wins mm. a lot of time because of the shame that we get like thrown at us for a mistake that anybody can make and get caught up with at any time. Like nobody right. is safe from it, right. and because we have it, we're like demonized for it. I saw my friend demonized for it. I've seen a whole bunch of people demonized for it. I'm not guilt free of demonizing other people for having it. Right. So I don't know. It was something freeing in, in expressing it and then getting all that back from people who also have it in here. And just I'm glad that you said the words because sometimes I can't. So yeah. that's how I'm working my way through it, being mm -hmm. I, I, being honest with myself and being honest with what I'm going through and not trying to bury it anymore because that you know, that only got me so far. Like mm -hmm. I buried it for as long as I could. Now I got to like, you got to deal with it. Now you got to live in it. Yeah. And I felt like that scene was very important for a lot of people that, that you just said that they that has trouble saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now was this you sharing that on the show, mm -hmm. was that the first time that maybe your family and friends heard it or had you already had gone through the process of being able to share? Cause it's, first of all, it's nobody's business. In, in the, yeah. Mm -hmm. in the place. But also from what I, what I've seen is that, that's also a process of kind of sharing and kind of, kind of, I won't say catharsis, but like to be like, I'm a person living with HIV. I'm not a person with, with HIV, but I'm a person yeah. living with this, you know, just like somebody that has diabetes or just like somebody that has such and such, it comes with a different level of care and like just for your own health. Yeah. Have you had conversations with your family and friends or was this the announcement that we saw last night? The only part people I told up into that particular moment was my boyfriend, of course, because I wanted him to go get tested like fat, like I, you got to go get tested right now. And then I told my sister who lived with me at the time. Um, but as far as literally everybody else, I know that was the announcement. My mom is in my phone right now. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, so your mom found out last night. Yes. Like of us. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, we may have to bring you back. I want to know what that conversation was like, honey, because I'm sure that she, I'm, I'm sure that um because you're you're from the south i guess missouri is considered the south right midwest yeah midwest south adjacent, yeah. South is kind of like that um and um you know I, I have a mom and i know that being the being the parent of a first of all a black gay man yeah. period there's so many fears that come with it and mm -hmm. you also spoke about um when you came out it was like we just don't get sick yeah, that's immediately the first thing you think of is like, okay, well, this is the lifestyle that you're in, and yeah. it's associated with the AIDS epidemic, right? So the first thing you think is you can go out there, and you're gonna catch that. Yeah, so that's the big, the big bad wolf, right? Yeah, it was said to me too. Yeah, that, that right. was and um, and that can be, that can be something very, really heavy to carry, even when you don't have it. Yeah, right? because you know this, like you said, the stigma and the shame that comes with it. People automatically think that we're nasty or that you know we we're carrying disease like we're like rabbit dogs or some shit like that. Yeah. Um, and I know that that if you do have a good relation, if you do have a good relationship with your mother, I'm sure that that's going to be a very um heart wrenching conversation. But there may be a, a moment of healing there uh, and compassion. I hope that's what you get in that conversation. So I want to we want it to be too heavy. No, right. <laughs> right. You want to get the main because you would look. You were here when I during the pre-show when I was trying to put these put my my myself together. I was I told Quentin um, when I was trying when we were reaching you before the show. I was like I'm sitting here like, sitting here got me tearing up at this TV and uh, <laughs> hugging through the screen. I know, like I was like, yeah. oh my god, like, no. I didn't expect that. From, everybody mm -hmm. said that I really didn't expect that reaction from everybody. I genuinely did not. You're the phase. Yeah, that's what happens. Yes. So you, you, really, you, you are a person that I think an, an objective viewer can mm -hmm. connect with you because it, you, you don't seem to be acting um, as much as some of your other castmates. Like it seems like a lot of them. Yeah. They put yeah. on, yeah. Right. <laughs> like, you know, you know, like that red light comes on and then like they flip yeah. the switch. Honey. Like, be like, and it's like every scene, you're just like, what is. 
I, I think you, you and Jeremy. I think you and Jeremy, because Jeremy be like, what's going on? Right, you know. Oh yeah, like, I, I had a view on who. Oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Oh no, they love Jeremy. <laughs> right, right. right. What, <laughs> what is happening? Here? No, I think um, what Jayla and, and uh, Alicia they was like all over him. I was like, okay, over who? Jeremy. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, well, child, we will, they love them some Jeremy child. Uh -huh. <laughs> so now, now we mm -hmm. get to get into the mess. Uh oh, um, <laughs> we get to get into the mess. So this last episode, there was this explosive. Um, Scene that happened at the love and hate party that was hosted by <laughs> Andre um, or Akon, Mr. Akon, Missy Elliott, Whisperer himself, um, and T Pain and Quan. Um, I ask you the same question like throughout the season, like it's like every show, there's like this, there's there's an explosion, right? There's always yes. there, there's always drama. There's going to be a fight. Um, is there a moment where there's like real healing that takes place in you all as a group collectively? Like, you know, you mean with everybody? Well, yeah, I mean, as a cast, as a group, yeah, like when you get to the other side of these, these, I mean, all of it seems really petty at the moment. Just from what we're seeing, it's like the level of the level of intensity that people are approaching these situations with. Mm -hmm. It seems kind of misplaced, and it does seem like they're carrying. You know what I mean? Um, and you know, there are people who critique the show. Um, there are people who are part of part of your production house that critique the show. Uh, <laughs> right, right, like right, less um, right. But as far as <laughs> like, you know, with you being in the group. Is that the role that you play? Do you feel that you play that role for them? Like, is that going to be your thing where you're the one that kind of like makes people kind of? I don't think together? that in particular is my role. I think I, like I, I do when it comes to everybody's issue with the other person, I see exactly where it started and why it is the way it is now. Mm -hmm. I think the reason why the issues are remaining issues is because some people in the group don't want to get past what it is because they want to be right in their in their separate situations mm. and i said it in the i think it was the separate second episode like i can get past the fact that we had a rough first night because the filming was weird production kind of had a switch mids like at the beginning of our season production kind of had a switch and it kind of threw us all off it's all our first time doing this i see where everybody kind of got thrown off right. if everybody took two seconds which is, I mean, which is speaking for myself, which is what I did. Like I could have been mad, like, just using an example, King Payne had his comment at the beginning. I could have took that and ran with that for the rest of the season. It was for me, it was no reason to. I took a step back. Okay, girl. But the difference how is how in how you handled it. <laughs> you showed him that the girls get coin. You invited yeah. him to see you right. collect your coins and ducats. And it shut it down all the way. Like it's nothing else to talk about. Mm -hmm. Right. There's nothing else to talk. And that's what I'm getting at. I think everybody just the arguments that you see happen all the way to the end, to me personally, and they can feel however they're gonna feel about it. To me, is them not wanting to get past it. It's them wanting to be right in their arguments, not wanting to get past it. Because the arguments that they're having, they can if they really wanted to. If they wanted to be over it, they could have been. Okay. So what do you? What advice would you give to other newcomers? This was. The, have you all wrapped the season? Or are you all still taping? Um, I think I'm tape. I was supposed to have a certain ending um, for the show, um, but Q is asking me to film something else because I don't think we're gonna be able to use it. Um, but I'm gonna talk about it at the end of the like yeah. our for now, our wrap. We you, wrap all wrap. Mm -hmm. like, you all are still in production. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So okay. More to see of you. Um, we didn't want to not as far as group sing like group scenes and shit like that. No, we don't. But as far as like adding little tidbits, like extra stuff for y'all to see, yeah, that. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So now that like I said, we're gonna get to the mess. Who two people, who are your two favorite cast members that you feel are your closest? Like who are your your two right of eyes on the cast? That I'm two I'm the closest to right now, mm -hmm. uh, would be Jeremy and Quan. Jeremy and Quan. Yes. All right, and who are the two people on the cast that you would totally social distance from in the real world? Like not talk to him ever again? That right. you would be totally comfortable. 
None right. of them, honestly. None of them. I don't have an issue with anybody. That's only, and that's not me trying to be politically correct. Yeah, because right. I've got to know these people, so they're all actually, like, believe it or not, Andre King, um, Frank, all of them are actually really sweet people. Mm -hmm. They just got thrown into a situation that I don't think none of them were prepared to like navigate. Okay. Like it may sound tacky, but I like watched reality TV and like studied reality before I got on this. So like I knew like we cool with production, but the production still has a job to do. Right. So I wasn't mm -hmm. gonna give them anything that they could use against me. <laughs> you did bring up Derek, you brought up Fran. Um, you know, we talked about this a couple episodes ago about like the whole um being you know the non-binary the, the non thing. thing yeah mm -hmm. we kind of see that come back up towards yeah. the end of this little argument or whatever and it's like i don't i don't i, I just i mean i don't i want to i want to be respectful you get what i'm saying but it's like boy come on now it's like, yeah, it looked a little convenient when it was like oh no i'm oh, okay well we didn't know that you well for the record he he identifies as non-binary yeah mm -hmm which is his gender expression. Yeah. Right. But I think the argument was the, the when she was referring to him, and I'm talking about um, Alicia Love, and she called him a gay man. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, him being gay or him liking men could, could be correct. Should she have called them a gay them? And it would be okay. I was so confused by that whole. So that with that, with toy. that moment, with that moment, she. And was we'll get, we'll, Fred, we're gonna get you on the show, and we'll we'll. Get that. <laughs> <laughs> we need that was one of the. Bit, that was like one of the examples of like the whole first night. I tell everybody the first night to me was alcohol and misunderstanding. It's like everybody was drinking, mm -hmm. everybody was lit, and then everybody kept misunderstanding what the other person was trying to say. But again, so, alcohol and misunderstandings. That's not like a mixtape. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, artists. Right, I'm like alcohol and misunderstandings. Alcohol and misunderstandings. I think that whole situation could have got past if, first of all, the first thing that happened was Jayla and um, Alicia were misunderstanding each other, and mm -hmm. they were into it. And Fran tried to jump in. Alicia um, did say he was a gay man. That was her perception. And when he said, don't call me a man, you don't know what I am, you don't know what I identify as, she did ask, well, what are you? What do you identify as? And he didn't answer her in that moment. Hmm? He okay. didn't answer her. Well, he was already so, on the defensive then. He'd yeah, he was, already, that, he was already, that's what I'm saying. Misunderstanding, it was already gone. All, all, all Fred had to do was say, I identify as non-binary. And Alicia would have said, well, you need to, basically what Alicia wanted was, them out of you know right them out of the, so right. Them right. Out of the conversation let them have grown women business basically exactly mm -hmm. and i think the only reason not that it makes it right but the only reason he was saying that or they were saying see here i go the only reason that friend <laughs> was saying that well you're a man i think that was just you know they were already trying to cut each other at the throat right. so he threw a dagger and it just was a little bit bigger on screen that whole night that like they cut a lot out that night was at least like three to three and a half hours i'll say at least oh of just argument back to back mm -hmm. to back once two finished two more got started and then three more got started after that <laughs> well we only got to see we only got to see five people engaged in each other what did we miss? exactly so what so spill the tea what did we miss Quan, what did you miss Quan and alicia q and uh Quan and alicia you gotta yes. the table Yes, this is on the table. Quan and Alicia got into it. D Hawkins and Alicia got into it. Um, Jayla. This is over the this, this is over the coke situation, right? This that's the, that's where the coke situation the popped up. Okay. Um, King Pain and uh, boop, 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 uh, Andre, of course. <laughs> Fran, <laughs> Fran and Jayla had a little tip for tat. Yeah, I've noticed that. I thought they were. Oh. They're cool, but it was a small tip for tat that they like. They kind of like Jayla had to check Fran a little bit, and then they got into it. Mm -hmm. There were two blow ups where they like everybody got up and left the table. Just <laughs> that night was, and this is me trying to remember. Like this is six months ago at this point. Like right. the first right. night was a lot, and then all the arguments that you're seeing now is people not getting over that first night. That first night. That first night. Mm -hmm. That's child. I mean the grudges. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, what's your sign though? 
Sagittarius. I have a Sagittarius sun, Aries moon, Leo rising. Sagittarius. Wow. Okay, yeah, so Aries I'm a Libra. Right. I, on, thought, Libra. I don't know why I thought you was a Libra because like it just seemed like you you give off Libra energy. I got a Libra in my chart somewhere. I think it's my Uranus. Mm -hmm. My Uranus. Is that what Uranus. You Uranus. Uranus. <laughs> How you say Uranus? We, we, we real bad. <laughs> 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 not my name is your name. Oh. Um, but yeah, as an Aries, I feel like in that situation, I probably would have been like, check please after the first hour. And okay. I'm, I'm going to catch y'all at the next event. No, listen. So that was me. I was trying to get the, but the waitress would not, she was so scared she wouldn't come back. Because I was just trying to get my beverage. I was at least, at least like, I actually got my drink. I'm like, I've been so it, what y'all saw of the drink, the when y'all saw every time y'all saw me with the drink, that was an hour and a half into the arguments. I didn't get my drink for an hour and a half. I counted. So we were uh, deep into the arguments by the time I got my drink. So these people arguing and mad and drunk while you sitting there sober <laughs> and confused. Hell no. <laughs> Sober and confused. That's like a that's a, that's a big sober. That's why I was understanding sober and confused. I There's one it. thing I hate: two drunk people arguing when I'm so child. You be like, you better cut it out for us. That both of us take a nap. Me this whole time. Like, uh -huh. We're very good. Well, tell the people what can we look forward to to seeing you, huh? Oh, oh. I, I, well, before the show, you know, my boyfriend is a super fan of of Miss Lacour. And I, I, had this, I had this question down in my notebook, but I wasn't gonna ask because like, okay, maybe we, we can we can get to the mess, but not too much mess. That's fine. D Hawkins makeup episode. That's none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> now see, we wasn't even going. We wasn't even going to mention. So the only reason we I all have our burdens to bear. Right. The only reason I brought that up is because <laughs> we're all friends, and I think, um, yeah, D. Hawkins has like he has his own like style. Like I love the stuff that he wears. Like I would probably wear everything that he has. However, we were kind of like shell shocked when the confessional you. came out and he was looking like Tammy Roman from season one, and it just. It wasn't adding up. Like I was like, wait, what is happening? Like I know he had he had the last thing we saw. Not him, he me wrong. Makeup and, he and said he was thing. trying to stir up controversy. He was trying to get the people talking because he had just dropped his new song last week. So he wanted to get the people talking, and that he did too. So so that confession was taped recently. It was that one was taped maybe like it's May now, maybe like a month ago. Oh, okay, mm. well, that makes more sense. So I was like, well, because the last episode, like, I'm dead. I'm like, damn, he grew his beard back fast as hell. Like, right, I, I thought it was makeup too. I'm like, ooh, okay, like, now, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a no, minute. I was, and people, everybody is, has been inboxing me, and I'm assuming Jayla and Alicia saying, why do y'all help him with that makeup? And why? Like, why? Why I wasn't why consulting. Why y'all help him? Why y'all ain't nobody like of all the people that are on the show that deal with makeup daily, whether it's personally or professionally, like there had to be somebody like. Says, let me let me just come to you real quick. I was not consulted. <laughs> we're gonna work on that. We got to make sure this is a team effort, okay? When one look bad, everybody look bad, okay? And I was not consulted. We said that's none of my business. Mm -mm. Hey, none of my business. Child. We'll work for season two. We just we gonna make sure Quinn, if you're listening, if you're watching, just make sure that before they do these confessions, just consult the people with the brush. Somebody. If you consult like it? I love it. <laughs> that's where I'm at. <laughs> Uh, it scared me. We didn't know what was happening. Because at first I was like, who is this? And let me tell you something. Right. Production is mess and production is messy too because, because if you go back and watch that episode, his very first confessional, they did a slow pan up to his face. I said, y'all knew what y'all were doing when y'all did that. I said, Q, you messy and you knew what you were doing. We peed. And I won't be convinced any other way. <laughs> I was like, now wait a minute. Now, I didn't, I'm like, now we about to tip into like a Jalen Lauren England storyline. I didn't know what was happening. It's baby. Like, it it was it was fierce and not in the mm. fierce, like fierce way. It was fierce as in like, oh my God, what's happening here? <laughs> no, my God. Oh you my know God. what? Well, you, like, you go to commit to it. You made the decision, commit to it is all I knew to say. But he can send me that wig. He send me that wig. He can't I, send me that unit. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> send me the wig. Send me the wig. Send me the piece. Okay. He right, did that. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Hershey, for joining us today. Um, we won't take too much of your time, but you were such a pleasure to have. Let the people know where they can find you and follow you, and what we can look forward to seeing you next. Oh, wait, 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 wait stop before you do that. Are you going to audition for RuPaul's Drag Race? 
I cannot legally answer that. Oh, oh my God. No, because I asked that when you were live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. We okay. can't right. legally answer if we if we apply if we apply, we cannot right. legally confirm or deny. Right. Which means that you applied because you can't confirm or deny. So tell me what you mean. You. you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sure. the car, uh, across all sodium, so social media so TikTok, instagram and what else do i do twitter um h-e-r-s-h-i-i-l-i-q-c-o-u-r -I -I um, all, all right well your information will be in the description and thank and you it's so never much. too late to tip a drag queen hershey oh. l h-e-r-s-h-i-i -I in cash uh h-e-r-s-h-i-i-l on cash app and Venmo. it's never too late to tip a drag queen <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you for having the patience that you did because we had I, I ran into some technical difficulties before we started recording, and you know I'm I'm I, I may appear good now, but you know hey I'm being. I said, look, right. I was back here, I was backstage, like please don't throw the computer, friend. Don't do right. it. Right. Like, said, don't do it. No, because this is an important interview, like for real. But thank you so much for. Uh, staying with us and absolutely and the show um and i hope you listeners enjoy watching this episode until next time i am your host darren green i'm prince derek doll this is the darren green show signing out